Hey there, Gary Wilkin, Southeast Regional Sales Manager for Command Light, coming at you today with Norby from FRC. How are you doing, Norby? I'm doing great, Gary. Uh, appreciate you inviting me along for this. As you mentioned, I'm Norby Pearl. I'm the Western Regional Manager for Fire Research. Uh, part of my job was being product specialist, but I've been in this industry for 32 years. Well, Norby, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us today and and, and sit down and go through your product line. We've been doing a series of informational videos here at Command Light and publishing them on all of our social media channels. And we wanted to come back and shoot these series of videos with each individual product specialist from all of our vending partners. So we really appreciate you taking time. You know, we've got a very special relationship with FRC and we've got a, a special uh, section on our website dedicated just to Fire Research Corp. So this comes through and it lets everyone know about your company a little bit. It outlines the AC, the DC options, and even quartz halogen. Uh, and bringing yourself in as a professional is going to allow everyone to understand what separates these individual light heads apart and also to get to know you a little bit more. Well, and I appreciate this. In this setting, we can actually step back and do it and include an educational idea of how these work, but not get all tied up in the technical. And I know you had made mention that you've got a little slideshow that you want to go through and and kind of like me and you had talked before, we, we don't really want to get dialed into the slideshow. So I see you got some props behind you. So I'm really looking forward to sitting here and talking with you today. So you want to walk me through what you've got here for us today, Norby? Yeah, well, like I said, you know, there's people that get into this and they get so technical. You're working with your fire departments and they're throwing out all these terms and measurements and uh, using a lot of language. They just make it too complicated. I sold trucks and equipment for 28 years, and I learned that use normal language. There's some terms you need to know, but then they have to go back and sell it to the board, and we'll share some experience with that down the road. But there is a few things you need to know. You look at the science of lighting, the uh, lux and the lumens. It's the way you, you measure. Um, lumens is effective versus raw. Raw lumens, the output of light. Calculation from multiplying the output of the LED by the total numbers of an LED in a light head gives you the raw lumens. So an example, I've got eight LEDs, they're 100 lumens. In essence, I have 800 raw lumens and that 100 lumens is per watt. So we're looking here at this slide. Um, you're, you're looking at your effective lumens. You're looking at distance over area. So in the blue uh, little picture there, Concentrated light, it's given me a thousand lux. But if it's spread out, it's now a hundred lux. You know, that little area shows it's a square meter versus 10 square meters. Well, Norman, that's very interesting. And I, I understand we're talking about terminology and the way actually light is measured. But you know, it, it, it begs the point that we brought to forward to people attention in our video series here, specifically the light over a bridge video that we uh, produced and aired on our social media with the ability to actually manipulate light and put it exactly where you want. And while your lights are phenomenal and they work great with our command light is you don't have the ability to actually put it on target. So that's kind of what you're explaining there with that lumens lux is the lux is a specific point where you're measuring it as, is that correct? Correct. Um, then as you work your way through, you start getting into what impacts your light. Um, Heat and LEDs do not get along. You've got thermal, you've got optical, and you have assembly losses. It could be up to 30% loss in the output from that LED. So in my example of 800, you lost 30%, you lost 240 lumens. So 800 minus 240 is giving you 560 effective lumens. And we'll get into what we've done to help prevent losing the lumens. So where, and how do you qualify this information? Well, how do when, we break it down for people to understand? I guess is what I'm asking. You, you put it in terminology that they can refresh or refer to. Um, these two little pictures right here are, are perfect. You know, I'm out here in Arizona now. During the night, clear, 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 you got a full moon. It's one lumen per square foot light projection that you would see on the ground. Out here today, it was a beautiful sunny day, sun in the clear sky on average 10,000 lumens per square foot. You know, that's, uh, that makes a lot more sense to me because 
going back to exactly what we were talking about, lumens, lux, light on target, and being able to manipulate the light, is I use the analogy of driving west at, at sunset and the sun being just right in your eyes and not being able to actually bend it away from your eyes to be able to redirect that light. So that light there is much more, if you're talking about 10,000 lumens per square foot, it's much more than what we can actually expect out of an LED. Is that correct? Correct. Um, once again, another term that you hear, and this one is actually important, is Kelvin. It's a measurement used to describe the color of light. Visible light runs from 1,800 to 12,000 Kelvins. And if you can look, you swing over the small little candlelight, 1,800 Kelvin, whip across the bulb, the HID bulb, you know, now I'm up to 4,500. Daylight is 5,000 to 7,500 Kelvins, and that's where we fall into place with the FRC LED lights. And then once again, your brightest is the blue sky, the 10,000 to 12,000 Kelvins. You know, that makes a lot of sense because when you start comparing the color of bulbs and such as that, is I really think back to uh, the days of, the, of being in the fire service, because I am a volunteer fireman myself, and and riding, uh, getting ready at night using a red light uh, with your night vision not being interrupted versus a white bright light. And it does, uh, I may be incorrect, I've never been able to qualify this. You being a lighting expert, you're probably able to tell me uh, the brightness of the red and the brightness of the white are probably very similar because they're both LEDs, but the Calvin, what you're showing there is different. Well, that actually, Calvin is measuring the color temperature where you're heading off to is how light is measured as it goes through the air. So you're running a uh, white light. It is a real tight pattern. You go to red or amber, it starts spreading out. So, uh, you know, coming out of northern Michigan, running full snow, fog and such, you had that in your face, the white light, everything was right there. You went to the red light, shut off your whites, you could now see better. And you'd made mention earlier about the lifespan of LEDs, and I think I've got the basics of the terminology there, but I often hear about LED lifespans. So how can we make an LED last longer? Everyone always promotes uh, LED light 50,000 hours, 50,000 hours, 50,000 hours. But there are factors that impact that. Heat and LEDs do not get along. So unless you dissipate the heat, you lose your LED intensity. Uh, as they heat up, you compare the first minute to the next hour after turning it on. How much intensity did you have when you first fired up? As that LED is getting hot, the heat's not getting pulled away, how much are you losing? The way we engineer our lights at FRC, we are set up to dissipate the heat. There's a nice cutaway of one of our Spectra light heads. Uh, it's hard to see the black uh, offset of the heat sinks. So I grabbed one of a light that we tore apart. And if you take a look at this, well, if it was straight on back without the cover, you can see all of these short little heat sinks. I do see that. And it looks like they're not necessarily in a row. Is that intentional? If you get along, they're all offset because heat rises. Yes, that sir. way you're not blocking the heat. Uh, some of our competitors, they use a continuous heat sink and it's just, it's fighting itself trying to get rid of that heat. So that's one of the first things that we do to help dissipate the heat. I was going to say, how much heat can that, that actually get rid of? What else do you do to get rid of that heat? Well, the other factor is getting the heat from the LED to that heat sink. So once again, that light that we have torn apart, this is the board made out of aluminum with the LEDs that are on it. And that's connected right to the heat sink. And that's what helps dissipate the heat quicker. Okay, so the aluminum uh, and the heat sink, they work together so that you can dissipate it quicker. So I'm curious to know, when you're talking about the heat sinks there, is how much are you actually losing uh, over time as that heat builds up if the heat is actually the LED's kryptonite? Well, what we did, a good scientific test, environment controlled, uh, the lights are out, set up, all of the measurement units spaced out. I'll be right up front, our 28,000 lumen spectra max. In a half hour, we lost 5% of our light. But our nearest competitor lost 25%. The next nearest competitor lost 40%. So to put it in terms that you, a firefighter and myself, anyone could understand, 
I fired up that light. I paid for those lumens. I've got my light. I'm 100%. But if I lost 25 and 40% of the light, now here's my intensity, and here's where I was working. You know, I ran fire EMS for 20 years, and it wasn't like, okay, it's a half hour, shut off the lights, let's go home. The last fire I was on was 17 hours. Norby, that, that is so true is these are not quick incidences and that often they're, they're not occurring in the most ideal conditions either. And we need them to work when we're working. Uh, let me see that picture of that aluminum board again uh, that you had held up there. I found this very interesting. This is my first time seeing a, uh, a cutaway of an LED board like that is how are we actually getting that light on target? So how are you actually emitting light from those little diodes there and getting them on target. Okay, well we talked about the two things, the way of getting light through, um, that being reflection, using mirrors, using um, reflectors. The other one is by focusing it and using a refraction, uh, literally where you're bending the light. So you can see on the left, that little black unit's my LED, hitting the mirror, and now it's spreading out the light pointing it into its general area. On the right is refraction, refraction, where the LED is coming in, hitting a diffuser, and then sending it into an area where you want your light to be. Now reflection, that's much, that's kind of like the older technology. Is that correct? That's just kind of like uh, old car headlights where they were surrounded by mirrors and they, they, they surrounded the bulb itself to project light out and they, uh, that way you could direct that light outside of the housing. Is that correct? That's a good comparison. I didn't even think of it that way. Uh, and all you do is look at the headlights as they keep changing for better technology to use less power, less light to do the same job, if not better. Um, one thing we found, and we talked about earlier, the um, loss of 30% because of heat and reflection and such, that by using the refraction, we're not losing as much of the intensity and what we're doing is really bending the light. So uh, if you wanna jump to that next slide that we have, uh, you can see here, okay, I got my light rays coming from the left to the right. Um, those are coming off my LED. They hit the converging lens. Now I'm doing a refraction and I'm putting that light into a focal point. Going back to, um, the reflection uh, in the uh, industry, we call that blare and glare. So if you light up that light and right here is your blare and that's what your light hitting the ground, but then the rest is glare and it's all wasted light or it's the glare came from the fog, the snow, the smoke, it's up there and it's in your face. But what we found with ours and we'll get into how we aim our lights is you're getting that if it's hitting the ground going up and now it's coming back. But we're not wasting the light. So by using refraction and that's bending the light, and I see your focal point there, that's kind of like sending the light through a uh, lens, if I'm following you correctly, and that's uh, putting it on a single point target where you're wanting it at. Is that correct? That would be much similar to the way glasses work. I see you wear glasses, I wear contact. That's way much similar the way they work is actually bringing that image into focus by bringing it all together. Is that the way that this here is working is by bringing it all into a converging point where it's uh, the most ideal? I can, I can, and I can show that to you. Um, if you jump into that next slide, this is the light projection coming out of FRC Spectra Light Hat. Okay. You've got that bright area comes straight out. That's what we call the spot area. Right down there in front of the light, immediately down is our light that we reflect or refract to light up immediately next to the vehicle. And then we have a third set of diffusers, as I refer to them, that lights up everything in between. So it's a true work light. It's not only straight out, but it's now there all the way to the truck. And going back to the term blare and glare, there's no light shooting up into the air. It's all being utilized to light up what you're trying to do. Okay, so I, I follow now. I'm still having a little bit of trouble understanding exactly what you're explaining to me in the blare and glare. So if I'm understanding is by not using mirrors, you're not projecting light in a directional pattern in every single direction. And by using this single lens, you're focusing that light straight out. Is that correct, Norby? Am I following you correctly? That is, and I can show that to you. Uh, once again, we tore a light apart to have all these parts. Uh, if you want to go back to full screen. Yeah, hang on, I'll bring it back to full screen there for you, buddy. 
This is the front of a Spectra light head. It looks just like a plain flat lens. But when you get in and look at it into the back and look in, you can see depth. You can see all of the diffusers that are giving direction to the light. So right across here, the large section, that's our spot. This little area down here is what's bending the light to light up next to the apparatus. And then the other two areas are giving you that everything in between. So I'm straight out, I'm everything in between, and I'm down by the vehicle. Okay, now I understand a little bit more. Is by using that there is, that's, that's how you're directing the light, and that's how you're not getting light going in an upward pattern. Everything's either going straight out or falling down. Is that correct? Correct. We're controlling where the light's going. It's lighting up your area. Okay, so Norby, I get asked so frequently because it's, it's become so common to remove the generator off the truck. And to the point, uh, people have come to us and started asking for DC light towers. We produce them every single day. And, uh, and it's something that we get asked frequently is, do you have to make a sacrifice in the performance of the light to go DC versus AC? No. Um, what was great, our engineers working with this, working with diffusers and such, regardless of the light, uh, we're going to talk about some different models that we have. The MS-14, 14, 14,000 lumen, 12 volt, 120, 240. Um, Spectra, 20,000 lumen, same thing, 12 volt, 120, 240. Spectra Max, 28,000 lumen. It doesn't matter what the voltage, voltage is, you're getting the same lumen. Very neat. So you, you actually walked us through there, and that takes me to a place where I actually want to go very next is I want you to take us through each individual light head you got. I actually got a video I want to share with you. I'm not sure that you actually have seen it yet. This video here is on our uh, YouTube's where I'm pulling it up from, but people can find it on our, all of our social media channels, including uh, Facebook, so that they can go see it for themselves. But this here, Norby, is a uh, police upfit that we actually done out in Colorado. And it is of our um, sea light with your mini spectras. And just look at these officers walking up here to this house without the mini spectras on with that flashlight and how dark it is. And then they turn on that sea light there and how much safer they must feel walking up to that house. You know, the sea light is such a great product for us. It's not to only to be used as a stationary product. It's a positional brow light. So you can actually use this while operating the vehicle and you can actually bring it to uh, shine on a house so if their mailboxes are not marked properly and uh, allow you to actually illuminate that. And I've actually got an image here of that police car on its upfit so people can see just how small of a package this is and how nice that really works with those mini spectras. So that's that actual police car there that was in that video, Norby, uh, with those mini spectras. So how about you start by telling me about what those mini spectras there are and the performance of them? Well, what was neat looking in that video, uh, you, you hit a key point. It made that scene so much safer for them. Uh, all the hidden obstacles were lit up. Uh, you, you noticed the lights from the spotlight was just straight out, but that Spectra MS was projecting 180 degrees. And then what you did at command light was put two of them on there. So you, in essence, doubled them to 28,000 lumen. I have one of those right here, and this gives you an idea of the size uh, of the 14,000 lumen. And what we did is we came out with this as an entry-level LED light versus the 20,000 or 28,000. And that would be for the departments that are on a tighter budget. But as talked about before, you know, it just nice flat light, looks like a flat lens, but you know the diffusers, well, here's my spot, here's my area immediately next to the vehicle, and here's the area, everything in between. So that is the Spectra MS. You know, that right there is uh, just a great light for that sea light because it's providing uh, a real effective illumination, a wide beam pattern. I mean, you've seen how wide that was, and I actually believe I've got a video you shared with me here in a moment of a house where you actually walk through each individual one, which would be a great uh, showing of what it would look like on that sea light as well but you really have an economical package there with those uh, uh, mini spectras. Now the next light that I've got an uh, image of here is I wanna share this here because this is just an absolute beautiful place. I hope to get there one day. Norby, tell me where this picture was taken at. 
because I know you actually was the one that provided me with these images uh, of this um, for you to go shoot for this interview. Well, once again, it being FDIC week, uh, we're, at, at, we're in the auditorium. They got the big lights going. We light these up and you see a bright area, but you really don't see what the light's doing. So what I wanted to do is put it out in a setting where you could get depth and distance and such. Uh, when we shoot and show this at night, you're gonna see the spot lighting up very well, what's going on on the other side of this ravine. Um, this is about five miles north of uh, Sedona. That's over a quarter mile across. Um, you know, it could be a real event. Someone could be down in the ravine hurt. Someone could be um, hanging off the bridge, whatever the situation would be. And so what we wanted to do is show this in the real world of how we're helping to make it safer when they're out there. And Norby, I've got a video here of that exact same location of where you were at that I'm going to share with you. This here uh, is of the spectra, and you can show just how far it's shining across there. And uh, I'm going to actually mute this out there so that you can hear me talking over it. But why don't you tell me about that light? Well, what you're seeing here, like I said, is the straight out spot. So we're lighting up way out. We're lighting up the bridge. The spot is actually washing out the area in between for work. So I swung off to the side to show just how much we're lighting that up that, you know, you lost the depth. And if you would have went straight down with the camera, it would have been right as, in, as intense right up to the light and then uh, the wraparound. I just want to clarify for everyone that's watching this video is you do not have to have AC power for these lights. This is a DC AC light configuration. Is that correct, Norby? Correct. When they buy them, they would order it as a 12 volt DC or the 120, the 240. And actually, we also have them 24 volt. Uh, a lot of them get on some military vehicles, uh, air fire rescue, um, you know, the or air, or airport rescue, ARFF, um, depending on what's the end use. Now, what are those lights you've got behind you there, Norby? Have you by chance got a spectra there you could show me? I've got one up in the air, air, but also got one up close. Um, so here's the Spectra, and you can see its size versus the Spectra MS. And like I said, what we did is took the Spectra and cut it in half for that, from the budget standpoint. But you've got the same setup, spot, work area, immediately next to the vehicle. And by looking at it, you couldn't tell if it was 12, 120, 240. You'd have to go by the number or how it was set up in the truck. Now, you know what's real interesting about that, Norby, is you hold them up there side by side, and it is half of it, uh, but just quick math, that's 20,000 lumens of light, and your mini spectra is 14,000, so it's actually half the package with a little bit more light in it. Get a little more crazy, go to the 28, you can't tell the difference. They look the same, but it's how we did the lights, the LEDs in there to get the increased lumens. And you're going to see a, a little video I shot because we're close to the house, you don't see the 20 versus 28 as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, in fact, if, if you got that, let's, uh, let's take a look at that if we got it up. Yeah, that wouldn't be nothing but a thing to pull up. So this here is that Spectra Max that you was just talking about with the 28,000 lumens. So here you can see how much wider, how much brighter the spot area is reaching across. Uh, as we work our way across and get over to the bridge, um, it's lighting it up much better, even than the 20,000 lumen. Come back off to the left, same full pattern, you know, all the shadows on the other side of the rocks and such. Um, the generator was up the hill from this. There was a lot of steps, and as we were working up and down, trying to shoot video from up by the truck and such, it was nice to have the lights to make it a little safer for me running up and down out there in the environment. Yes, sir. And you know, actually, you actually did something there that you uh, provided me with this additional image here that I want to share with you as well and showing how far you was able to project that down is I just want to share this image here with uh, everyone that's watching with us is just how deep that canyon actually is, is that canyon is as deep as it is wide. I mean, and you was getting light just plumb down near to the bottom of that. That was very impressive with that Spectrum Max. And, and actually that picture doesn't do justice for the depth. Uh, we were lighting up the river and off to the left under the bridge, way out on, as the river projects out, um, it, was, it was neat to see it in the night setting. Uh, what was interesting being in the desert though was all the dust in the air that's constantly there. Um, so it was like, 
well, it's just welcome to the environment. I wonder now why I had allergies I never had in Michigan. <laughs> I understand. You know, I have actually got that video here of your house that, uh, that you uh, shared with us so that we could see the difference. Now, I really love this comparison. Again, remember looking at that sea light we shared with those police cars, that was two of your mini Spectres, the 28,000 lumen, and you're gonna cycle these through the uh, mini Spectre, the Spectre, and then the Spectre Max, and just see the difference there between all three of them. And it's amazing when you go to look at how we're able to make that condensed sea light with those mini Spectres, uh, shine outshine the spectrum max there which they're actually equivalent so i don't guess it's outshining but just how great it actually is yeah well and it's it's the light projection and i got a good analogy for that that was the fourteen thousand lumen this is a twenty thousand lumen spectra and then this would be the twenty eight thousand spectra max like i said it was hard to see the difference between the 20 and 28 and that's why the nice canyon but years ago i was at working with the fire department and the chief said, I'm going to my board meeting tonight. I want the brightest light possible. How do I explain to them the difference between the 14, the 20 and the 28? And it was just one of those things that just popped in my head. And I said, well, chief, put it in terminology that the board understands. Tell them you walk in the living room, you got that light with the three-way switch. They click the first one, the 50 watts, there's your 14,000 lumens. Click it to the second, it's 100 watts, there's 20,000 lumen. Give it that third click, 150 watts, now I'm at 28,000 lumen. And what it equals is a brighter light, I'm projecting out further and it's making the scene safer. Uh, right here's uh, the um, graphics of the testing the light projection and such. Um, on the left you have the spectra. Um, I'm hitting 40 meters wide, I'm projecting out 90 meters. Now this light is up in the air and aimed down a little bit so they can measure it. Uh, the next one over is the Spectrum Max, and that is, looks like uh, 50, 50 meters wide, and I'm projecting out 90 meters. But then we also have a model we didn't talk about yet is the Spectrum Max S. Uh, 14,000 lumen of work light, 14,000 lumen of concentrated light. It's opening up about, uh, looks like 40 meters wide, projecting out over 120. But that's as measured as you saw in our projection of even with the MS, we're 180 degrees. But I'm gonna show you the Spectrum Max S. And here's the difference versus the Spectra. There's a whole lot more diffusers in that one there, it looks like. And that's the key. So what you're seeing is instead of one row for spot, there's two rows. We have those across. I've got a larger diffuser for my area below the light, and then I have my area to cover everything in between. So what these are good for is if you've got the tall buildings, you've got the cell towers, uh, the wind generators that are 300 feet off the air. In the case, um, I shot some video of the canyon. It didn't come out too good, but it was amazing the projection of the spot it wasn't lighting up the mountain across. I was catching the one that was a couple miles away. You could see it out there. You couldn't see it great. But then there was some off to the right that lit up pretty good. So what we do with this, um, you set it up with two switches. So one is 14,000 lumen work area, the other 14,000 for spot, or you can have both on and have a work light with a spot. Tell us about this LED technology and and does LEDs work identical to that? Is there a warm-up period uh, before they get the full brightness, or, or how does that work? What's nice about LED with ours, it, they're on right away. They're right up to intensity. Um, go back to the old uh, HID. They were popular for about four or five years till we realized they could, couldn't take the stress on a fire apparatus. You turned them on, it took them four or five minutes to get full intensity. But if you shut it off and flipped it back on, it wouldn't come on right away. It had to like reset itself before it would get going. Um, the other thing though that's interesting, and it's the same with halogen bulbs, you lose that bulb, you lose the, uh, the driver on that HID, you lost your light. What we've done on our spectras, it's in a quadrant of four. So you're running 14 volts, you kick on your light, you got full intensity, everything's nice and good. But going down the road, alternator starts getting tired on the truck, and now your voltage is starting to drop. Instead of losing the whole light, 
you lose the quarter. And say now it's dropping down to 11, 10, 9, whatever. You lose the other quarter. You still have light on. Now you realize you got a truck problem. You know, hopefully you got some help, some other lights going. But um, we're trying to do our best to keep it safe out there. Uh, we're working with mechanics and that. You know, I've been out this doing this for 32 years. And you get talking with them. The old rule of thumb is it's ground, ground, ground. 99% of the time, if there's a wiring issue, it's ground. And once again, my background coming out of Northern Michigan, the grounds would start to crowd up with all the stuff they put on the roads to get rid of ice. And once that start building up the resistance, you're losing voltage and that's where you'd start losing quadrants. Uh, you know, tell them check that. You got older wiring, they start to uh, deteriorate, get uh, resistance, so you're dropping voltage. There's many factors that can impact that. So that's one of the bonuses of the way we designed our lights that helps make it safer. So I want to ask a quick question about where you were just talking about. You held up the spectra whenever you were talking about it being in quadrants. Now, with the mini spectra, is it also in four quadrants, or is it divided down into two? That's that's in two. Okay, that's kind of what I figured you was going to say. With it being half size, I figured it was going to be half of it. I just wanted to clarify for myself, because I was asking the question, so I figured other people were as well. Now, I want to build on this, though, because you still do offer quartz halogen. I know this to be a fact because you can find it on our website in that section that I was pointing people to in the beginning is your FRC page on our website. You know, right there it is. You still got the FRC focus in AC quartz halogen available. Correct. So what would, why would you point someone away from quartz halogen uh, to LED or why would you tell someone that quartz halogen is a good option for them? It, it really comes down to budget when, they, they're laying out the truck and here's everything they need to put on it. If, if they can afford to do the LED lights, it's a much safer scene. It's, uh, it's better for the department when they're running around and doing things. I've got, actually got the picture to compare a halogen versus the LED. Um, that They're equal 150 watt. Uh, I got to think what we were at. We were 12 volt. So when you flip on an LED light, where did that fire pit or whatever that came from uh, there but that's you know that's why the halogen that's why we did the ms14 to give them an entry level to that might be enough to help get them into an led light in today's age quartz halogen is still very relevant it's all about what your budget will allow uh, and both do still have advantages both of them are still widely used across the united states depending on your budgetary restriction that you do have uh, but let me ask you this, what does the warranty look like for uh, FRC? The LEDs are five years, and what we have is a no hassle warranty, uh, something we worked with with the customers, worked with Command Light. Um, when you have an issue with one of our lights and, and things do happen, uh, you know, might lose the board, might lose something, but um, right away they contact technical support, uh, have the serial number off the back of the light, if it's in the warranty period, they'll ship out a new light right away, then have them send in the bad light. Uh, after uh, re evaluating it, you know, if it is warranty, we take care of them. If it's not, because once in a while, the department will take out a tree limb or something with the light head and try to get it warranty. Well, it, that's just not warranty. But we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, what's nice with command light, your customers, if they have a problem with the light head, it, contact you, but actually they come to us and we'll set it up. They send the light to us direct. We want them to let you know about it so you can trace it through too, but it saves them from shipping it to you and then you shipping it to us and it saves time for the customer in the end. Yes, and, and you know, Norby, and I go back and I talk about uh, a couple of things I wanna build on what you just said is our warranty is also five years. So that's a five year matching warranty on both of our products when we're working together. But much in a similar way that uh, FRC and Safely work with all OEMs, we work with all Whitehead manufacturers, but that really helps out with FRC is the fact that you are allowing it to go directly back to you guys so that it's a very uh, condensed process in getting that replacement so the product can get back up and running. Now, Norby, I don't want to build on something. I want to go back and just talk about it briefly. And that is the fact that we can do a quartz halogen upgrades for any of your old FRC quartz halogens to LED technology today. Uh, using your light heads, we can still go back and upgrade those FRC lights to new FRC LEDs if that's something that a consumer is interested in. Yep. 
we're working on that program and it's the adapter to uh, take the MS-14, that would be the closest to the halogens up there. Um, you know, we got to look at the amp draw, uh, you know, what, what was the uh, setup of the original light head, but uh, it's, it's simple of, it's, it's one of those, one of these days when we get some money, we're going to upgrade that halogen to LED. Well, I always say it's one of these days. You got a little extra money. Let's make that scene safer. Get a hold of you folks. Get a hold of us and see how we can get them a better, safe scene. Yes, sir. One last thing, and I'm gonna let you go for today. And and again, we really appreciate you sitting down with us. Where's FRC based at, sir? Um, well, FRC is based out of Nesconset, New York. Uh, FRC is part of Safe Fleet. Uh, Safe Fleet from the Emergency Division is Fire Research, Foam Pro, Elkhart Brass, and ROM, Roll uh, R O M. Um, R O M, Roll Up Doors and Steps and such. They're based out of uh, Belton, Missouri. Everything's made there. Uh, Elkhart Brass, Elkhart, Indiana. Our nozzles, monitors, valves, everything's there. Uh, New York right next door to each other. In fact, across about a 30 foot driveway, uh, one part is FRC lighting, the back is FRC lighting and Foam Pro. So we're an American company building these with great people. Well, that's absolutely wonderful to hear, Norby. And, and you know, that means a lot to me as well because I work for an American uh, owned family business. Uh, and we're based in Colorado, just north of Denver in Fort Collins. So it's great to, partner with an American company, and especially when you look at ours being a family-owned American company, and that our leadership is still involved in the same leadership that founded our business. So, so again, Norby, I appreciate you sitting down with me and going through your product line and how we work together to develop such a wonderful product. Uh, and again, I just want to conclude this by letting people know if you need information on Command Line, you can go to www.commandlight.com and get information there. We've got contact information for all the regional sales managers for your area listed on our website. And you can reach out to us by phone or email, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions, and you can request catalogs from there as well. Now, Norby, how would they get information from you? Well, it would be the same, um, safefleet.net, or you can get into fireresearch.com, uh, phonepro.com, Elkhart Grass, Rom. Um, what's neat is we have, you mentioned the catalog, catalog's on there. You can bring that up on our website. And if you get into page 20 and 21, it shows the different light heads, the different amps, the different voltage. And that helps them as they're laying out their apparatus saying, okay, I've got so much power I'm pulling, which ones would work. But uh, like I said, it's one of those. And what's neat is uh, they got you and your crew. They've got our crew for resources as they're working, laying out their apparatus or trying to upgrade, same thing. They can contact all of us and we're just here to help them. Well, Norby, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. And I really appreciate going through the product. I know it's gonna be a while before me and you see each other, but you being on the West Coast, me being on the Southeast down here in the East Coast. But uh, until we meet again at one of the next trade shows, Norby, please be safe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon, my friend. It's the same. That's that's one thing I love about this industry. We're like a great fraternity. We see everybody over and over. And like I said, I've been doing it for 32 years and it's just amazing. It's not the people you meet, it's the friends you make. That is so true. Well, well sir, I really hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Thanks again. All right, bye-bye now.